Yeah, I, I think in making a thermonuclear weapon, um, the basis of the thermonuclear weapon is is a fusion reaction between deuterium and tritium. So they're different isotopes of the element hydrogen. And, and when they fuse, they give off a considerable amount of energy. The trick, though, is to get them to fuse, and that takes uh, quite a bit of energy. And so the um, deuterium occurs naturally, and you have to separate it from, from normal water. And the, with the tritium, you produce in lithium-6, uh, typically, by irradiating in a reactor. And so um, now tritium has a 12-year half-life. So after 12 years, half of it's gone. And so, and it's also, it's very radioactive. Um, well, it, it's radioactive, but it gets out of anything. So it can spread very easily. So it's very hard to contain. Um, and so there's, if you, for example, are building a neutron initiator for a nuclear weapon, um, one of the ideas was to make it out of just deuterium, which are stable. Deuterium is stable. And so you can fuse deuterium. So DD will, will under sufficient energy, will fuse. And so for a neutron initiator where you want a long life component and you don't want any radioactive material, then that's an ideal choice. But it's not an ideal choice if you want to build a thermonuclear weapon. You prefer the, the deuterium-tritium fusion reaction. And so how do you get that? There's, there's, and there's different ways to do it. If, you, if you're going to boost a nuclear weapon, the U.S. sense of boosting where you, the atomic bomb goes off and then that creates fusion in, a, in the core where the boosting involves putting a gas mixture of deuterium and tritium into the core, uh, in the center. Um, in that sense, you have to have the fissile material has to be in shells. And then you have an empty center and the gas gets injected into it, the gas of deuterium and tritium, and then the atomic blast sets off the fusion reaction between deuterium and tritium, and then that creates neutrons, and that's what the boosting is, creates a lot of neutrons that actually fission a lot more of the plutonium or weapon-grade uranium than, um, than, you, than fission by the atomic explosion. And so you can, instead of getting a half a kiloton of explosive yield with boosting, you can get three to four kilotons. But again, you, the way it's done is you have to have a, a, a special container outside the core with this gas containing tritium. And it has, has a radioactive half-life, which means that it's a limited life component, and so you have to replenish it after some number of years. So again, it's, it's not ideal. Now, in a thermonuclear two-stage device, um, you don't, it's hard to put in the tritium. And, and they learned that, it, and again, it's, it's not ideal, and, it, and it's hard to get into the, in a sense, when you have the two-stage thermonuclear weapon go off, it's hard to get the tritium at the right place at the right time. But they learned that if you put lithium-6 in it, then the neutrons coming off the atomic blast will irradiate the lithium-6 and make the tritium in place. And then that tritium is the basis for the deuterium-tritium fusion reaction in a hydrogen bomb.